let's see if he can continue that trend. And okay, we're off. We open with a king's pawn opening, and Anish Giri now doing something I've never seen him play before: the Scotch, yeah, Scotch game. Uh, What's up with the opening today? <laughs> yeah, full of surprises. They're keeping us on our toes. That's what we love to see. No more quick Berlin draws. Anish Giri, he's playing for the win. He's playing for entertaining chess, and this tends to lead to the really complex battles. Um, actually, Nakamura himself played this opening once against me. He was white. Uh, he played the Scotch game, so he knows a few things in this opening. We see Nakamura looking up to the left. He's choosing a, uh, choosing a response here. Black has three or four main moves. He's just choosing a path. Uh, the reason he's pausing is because he didn't expect this one. Anish Giri opening up the center very quickly, leading to dynamic play with the Scotch game. Yeah. Oh, it is a little bit incidental, but okay, we're going to take this move now. This is a sideline that I myself uh, played. I kind of called it like a quick fix, a quick remedy when I uh, faced against the Scotch. Now, the whole point is that you provoke a, a pawn to come to a square that we will call C3 square and uh, force it to block the check. Yeah, so white, it does look like white gains a move once white pushes this pawn, as he has done, and he's given blocking the check. White has gained a move. Black could have put his bishop there last turn, but the whole reason is, yes, you've given white a free move, but he doesn't want his pawn on that square. He wanted to use that square for a knight instead. So despite the fact that Nakamura, with his check, is losing a move, losing time, he has... Um, he has forced Giri to play a move he didn't necessarily want to play it now. Okay, white bishop developing, the black bishop drops back to a safe square where it's nice and defended. Exactly, I mean, there was a big threat in the position. And uh, this is the consequence of giving your opponent some free moves. Uh, Picaro, sorry, Anish is playing very, very actively with his pieces. And now his knight has jumped forward to the dream square. The square is called F5. We actually have a little expression coined by Kaya, which is like, put a knight on F5. It will thrive, and uh, there it is, and it's attacking a pawn. And uh, I recently, I mentioned this to you, Mac, I recently heard the phrase, um, you'd sell your mother-in-law for a knight on f5. <laughs> uh, so that's how strong knights are on this square. Um, that knight doing a great job, not only attacking one of black's pawns, but another defending pawn, but also defending the bishop. And that knight does retreat, it does step back to recapture the bishop on that last turn. Yeah. So white has an extra pawn in the centre right now, white has a bit more space. Um, but black is very solid, black has no weaknesses. Nakamura developing his knight, getting ready to castle. Black. Yeah, and uh, just note where Nakamura has placed his knight, he puts it in front of his king, and the reason why is because that knight is going to maneuver itself to the right and to control some squares. Now, I don't know if
level means that Black, if he's very, very accurate, maybe he can make a draw. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so in practical terms... To, would you be tempted to just pick up your pawn and, and uh, that's been attacked? Move it two squares or uh, one square? Or I'd would probably you be... save that one for next move. Okay. Hard choice to commit. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, I, I think I'd probably just move my rook to defend that pawn right now, but. Okay. Uh, yeah, difficult choice. Very I, I, I really love like the way that we think in differently in, in, in games here. You're so, you're so clever with your thinking about how you delay. It's not necessarily the best way though. Sometimes, uh, yeah. sometimes I miss the moment because I'm too scared to commit. Sometimes you need to, yeah. need to uh, kind of go. Well, you need to take that moment to to make that decision. Yeah. It might disappear. That chance might be very. I, I just, I just really, uh, I'm really fascinated by how your mind works, and I, it's just a, an exercise in self control and patience, and uh, that's something that every person, if you want to be good at end games, you do need to know how to bide your time, how to pose your opponent difficult or problems. But sometimes. Being direct is like revealing your hand. Okay, now this move I did not predict because I was too busy focusing on just exploding open those lines on the left. And uh, Hikaru is just simply saying, I'm going to attack your pawn. So he really wants to do what I wanted to do, which is just activate the rook on the queen side. And he's actually got a very similar idea to the one we highlighted a few moments ago. Black does want to activate both of his rooks. At the moment, neither of Black's rooks are down on that second rank, but that's the dream destination. If White gets greedy now, if White starts taking some pawns with his own rook, that will be Hikaru's idea. He will take a pawn with his own rook, and then he will start trying to double up and use that teamwork and uh, connect the Black rooks. It's not easy to stop that, however, if Anishgiri doesn't want to allow Black's rooks to get active, he does have to take a timeout, take a moment to defend that pawn uh, in the corner there. So, uh, I mean, personally, I would, again, just not commit here. I would just defend that pawn and continue asking Black the question, how are you going to activate your rooks? But if Anishgiri decides that this is the moment, if he does go for some trades, then we will see a race where the Black's rooks can get active before all of his pawns drop off. So, interesting decision. So White either has the choice, the choice to just step the rook back and defend the pawn, or take the pawns and yeah. just uh, battle it out. I would be, this, in this situation, I think I might be tempted just to step back with no rook. What would you do, David? I would definitely uh, defend that, that corner pawn. I'm not sure how. I'm... White has two options here. If we bring up the analysis board, we can see what 